good afternoon it's a pleasure to be participating in this conceptual pediatric trauma course and i greet you from mangalore i'll be dealing in another 10 minutes on this uncommon but important fracture montegia fracture dislocation in children it was giviani battista montegia who described this fracture way back in 1848 by definition this fracture is fracture of the proximal third of the shaft of the alna with dislocation of the radial head though not a very common fracture it is important because it is missed in 10 to 20% of the of the cases and moreover it is fascinating because of its displacement and the different modes of trick to understand it we should understand the anatomy we must know that the radial head articulates well with the ala notch there and the annular ligament surrounds the neck of the radius and the quadrate ligament and the radial collateral ligament and the elbow capsule which encapsulates the elbow both anteriorly and posteriorly it was uh, jos luis bado a uruguayan way back in 1958 because previous to that we used to classify this fracture as flexion and extension depending on anterior angulation and posterior angulation the displacement of the head of the radius anterior and posterior but it was this gentleman who classified it into four types because the original classification did not mention about the lateral displacement and the other ensuing injuries in this complicated fracture the bado classification is our old original flexion type is type 1 where there is an anterior displacement of the head of the radius with an anterior angulation of the ulna the type 2 is a posterior dislocation of the head of the radius with a posterior angulation of the ulna the type 3 is a lateral dislocation of the head of the radius with a proximal ulna fracture and type 4 is where the head of the radius is dislocated anteriorly or posteriorly with fracture of the both bones of the forearm and this is the classical classification which i mentioned you remember the head of the radius which goes anteriorly there is an anterior angulation posteriorly posterior angulation laterally it can be either way and in type in type 4 it is type 1 radial shaft fracture as well and type 1 there are equivalents of type 1 have been described today when there is an isolated anterior radial head dislocation but this has to be this has to be uh, differentiated with an with a congenital dislocation where it it is from birth it is there and the ulnar fracture with fracture of the radial neck and number 3 is the isolated radial neck fracture and fracture of the ulnar diaphysis with olecranial fracture and posterior dislocation of the ulno humeral joint with or without fracture of the proximal radius so these are the type 1 equivalents which you may have to face some time and you should know about let's at all classify it further the type type 1 as as such when there is an anterior bowing of the ulna with an anterior dislocation they call it type a and type b where there is a green stick fracture of the ulna as you, as you see here that the opposite cortex is broken and type c is a complete ulna fracture as you see there with an anterior so this is this is let's classification which is a modification of the bado's classification <coughs> the mechanism of injury is a direct blow the hyperpronation in majority of the cases and an extension and deflection associated with this these are the different radiographic examination which which i have put in for you when you draw the important line which you which you draw is when you draw a line along along the shaft of the radius it has to pass through the center of the capital as you see in that middle picture where it is just below the type 2 it has to really pass through the center of the head of the radius whereas in when there is a head of the head of the radius is either dislocated posteriorly or anterior or laterally it shall not pass through that as you see in that the line as you see there 
and these are the first one is affection X-ray, where, where the, I mean the type one, whereas the second one is the posterior, where it's type two, and uh, and the, you would appreciate the type three, uh, type four, which uh, where there is a lateral dislocation, and uh, the type four is there with the fracture of the both bones of the forearm with an anterior dislocation. So it is type one, type two, and type three with the lateral, and and an angulation of the ulna, and the type four is both bones of the forearm. And the next X-ray, which you see, uh, the high high Montegia, where it has been, where the head of the radius is posterior and angulation, which has been successfully treated with a plate. And uh, this is what I was mentioning about. You will have to differentiate between a congenital dislocation and and and, and a, a traumatic dislocation. You would see the rounding off of the head of the radius, whereas whereas the no, whereas the normal head of the radius there will not be a round. <coughs> The management in majority of the cases is non-operative. You reduce the ulnar fracture where there is an angulation. The head of the radius sits back in its position if you maintain the length of the radius, I mean length of the ulna. However, it is imperative that the head of the radius has to snap back into its position and elevate the deforming forces and immobilize it, take a check x-ray and usually in a flexion, flexion or, or a type 1 it is put in about 80 degrees of flexion with, uh, with a semi-prone position, whereas, whereas if, it is, if it is unstable in flexion in type 2, it has to be, it has to be, uh, the plaster has to be put in extension. So the majority is by close reduction, as, as I told you, is type 1 in flexion, type 2 in extension if it is need be, and type 3 and 4, it is usually in flexion and it is uh, to be immobilized for a little longer period <clears throat> for the six weeks because the fracture has to completely heal otherwise there is a possibility of angulation so the check x-ray has to be taken every week so that the deforming forces will not act and by chance the head of the radius is dislocated or there is a bowing of the bone or an angulation it has to be corrected and up to 10 to 25 degrees of angulation of the ulna is acceptable Rarely an open reduction may be necessary and uh, and the ulnar fracture reduction where the, the chances where there is not an acceptable position of the ulna, we may have to openly reduce it. Or when the radial head is not getting reduced due to either the annular ligament coming in the way or an osteochondral piece is in between so that the head of the radius does not snap back into position. And in such cases as you see in this picture, as you would appreciate, that is the annular ligament, which is impinging in between the ala notch and the head of the radius. And you may have to elevate it and see that it is cut and, and reduced back into position and suture. Or in sometimes, sometimes if it is very badly denuded, then you may have to excise it and repair, repair the annular ligament. And coming to the fixation of the ulna, different modalities have come into being, either either a rush nail or or or, or a malleable nail or or uh, the different types of internal fixation with the plate. But with a very rigid plate like that, with a, there can be a chances of a bit of deformity and so But it is always it is it is better to fix it with an intermediary devi device, as you see seen there, and it is removed early. Whereas in if the child is above about ten years of age, it is always and the higher the fracture, it is always better to fix it with a plate, as you see in that particular picture. And you must be very very definitive that the head of the radius has come back into position, because that deforming force of the head of the radius can result in an angulation and and even break the bone or bend the bone, and the fracture will not. Always a question is asked whether whether a trans capital a pin can be used if the head of the radius does not come back to the position. My answer is no because various papers and publications have come into work where where the articular cartilage damage has occurred because of these pins. Usually it is better to see that whatever is causing the head of the radius not to be reduced back into position is is uh, is treated properly so that the head of the radius comes back into position. That is the last salvaging procedure which can be done at trans capital. <clears throat> the complications of this uh, fracture is are many. Number one is, as I told you, 10 to 15 percent, it is failure to diagnose the case. And number two is improper reduction where you have failed to reduce the fracture. Number three is malunion. 
off of the ulna with a bowing many a times or an angulation and persistent dislocation of the head of the radius which has been missed and uh, number two because it is an intraarticular fracture naturally that can be stiffness and a pro proper physiotherapy has to be given and uh, rarely an ulna now or a median now, and more commonly a posterior intraocular now injury can happen which has to be looked into and also a workman's contracture has to be prevented by early diagnosis well uh, here are two cases uh, as you as you appreciate uh, that the head of the radius has popped in where the ulna is fractured ulna is united well and that was obviously missed because the length of the ulna hasn't been maintained the head of the radius is persistently out and, uh, and the other case which you see is uh, the complete bowing of the ulna is occurred and uh, and it has uh, and uh, number 3 is there is a delayed union the head of the head of the radius is popped out again and you would appreciate in that child the gross deformity which has to be corrected the length of the ulna has to be maintained with an internal fixation preferably with a plate so that we, and the head of the radius has to be reduced back into position as early as possible the complications as i told you posterior intraocular no the neglected fractures in neglected fractures as you as you as you as you have seen as you have seen in the pre previous case that uh, you will have to do an ulnar osteotomy and a lengthening as to and the annular ligament reconstruction with well torsi procedure where you take the triceps strip and see that the the annular ligament is repaired and the periarticular ossification has has to be treated symptomatically unless it is very very big uh, after the complete growth which is excised and compartment syndrome is to be treated as early as possible and prevention is the best cure for it well to conclude proper radiological diagnosis is a must in pontigia fracture dislocation and a lap and a lateral oblique view is is taken and classify according to badus accordingly and anatomical reduction of the head of the radius is a must and length of the ulna is to be maintained at all costs and a pop cost up to 6 weeks and look for nerve and vascular injuries thank you